Now the legal language of Article 14 reads something like this. The state shall not deny to any person equality before the law or the equal protection of the laws within the territory of India. Now, in this sentence, two things were there. First was equality before law and the second was equal protection of laws. Now, I would like to tell you that within this article 14, that is right to equality, two things are there. The doctrine of equality before law and the doctrine of equal protection of laws. The doctrine of equality before law is of the British origin and the doctrine of equal protection of laws is of the uh, is taken from the American Constitution. Now these two concepts or these two doctrines that is the doct doctrine of equality before law and the doctrine of equal protection of laws the essence of both of these things is the same but the way of saying them is a bit different. I will explain you. First, I will explain you the clauses that are covered under the doctrine of equality before law. The doctrine of equality before law, that is of the British origin, says that, that there is absence of any special privileges in favor of any person. First thing. Second thing is says that, that all the persons are equally subjected to the ordinary law of the land administered by the ordinary law courts of the land. Third is that no person, whether he is rich or poor, official or non-official or high or low, is above the law. So there are three things uh, which uh, tells us about the doctrine of equality before law. The first is that there are no special privilege, privileges available for any specific person that is there is absence of any special privileges in favor of any person the second thing is says that that there is equal subjection of all persons equal subjection of all persons to the ordinary law of the land which is administered by the ordinary law courts of the land and the third was that any person whether he is rich or poor official or non-official or high or low is above the law that is, everybody is below the law and the law is the superior most. So, this was the doctrine of equality before law. Coming to the doctrine of equal protection of laws. The equal protection of laws says that, that under equal circumstances, there will be equality of treatment. Both in the privileges conferred and liabilities imposed by the law. This is the first point. The second point says this, that the like should be treated like without any discrimination. And the third point says that, that same application, same laws will be applied to all persons who are similarly situated. That means that persons in similar situation will be treated similarly. Now the way of the basic essence which both of these doctrines doctrines are trying to achieve is the same the way of saying these things is a bit difficult the biggest thing in the second uh, doctrine that is the doctrine of equal protection of laws the biggest thing about this is that in this it has been specifically mentioned that that equal treatment or same treatment or same application of law will be given to those two same persons who are similarly situated or in similar situations basically the thing is that so things like these has not been told in this doctrine of equality before law but the basic essence and the basic objectives of equality is being achieved in both of these things there are some minor differences between these two doctrines, the doctrines of equality before law and doctrines of equal protection of law. So, Indian constitution has kept in inside it both of these doctrines. That is, it has also kept the doctrine of equality before law and it has also kept the doctrine of equal protection of law. Now, under Article 14, 
देर इज वन मोर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग विच इज टर्म्ड एज द रूल ऑफ लॉ नाउ द रूल ऑफ लॉ इज ऑफ द ब्रिटिश ओरिजिन इट वॉज बींग सेट बाई ए वी डाइसी हु वॉज अ वेरी एमिनेंट ब्रिटिश ज्यूरिस्ट नाउ द रूल ऑफ लॉ विच वॉज ऑरिजिनली ऑफ ब्रिटिश ओरिजिन कंसिस्टेड ऑफ थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट एलिमेंट्स द रूल ऑफ लॉ दैट इज दैट हैज बीन इम्बाइब्ड इन द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन कंटेन्स ओनली टू ऑफ दोज प्रोविजन एंड नॉट द थर्ड प्रोविजन सो What is this rule of law? I will tell you. First, I will tell you what was the British origin of this rule of law, and after that, I will tell you what is the Indian version of this rule of law. The British version of rule of law consisted of three main important points. The first important point was absence of arbitrary power. That is, no man can be punished except for a breach of law. This is the first point, which says that that there is no arbitrary or totalitarian power to any. state government or union government that is a person can be punished only when he has breached or abrogated or committed a crime or indirectly he has broken a law then only he can be punished otherwise he cannot be punished that is no arbitrary sense of power can punish him without any reason there should be a reason to punish a person this is the first point the second point is that equality before the law that is equal subjection of all citizens whether he is of a rich status or of a poor status whether it is he is a high status or low status whether he is a government official or a private official so he will be equally subjected to the ordinary law of the land administered by the ordinary law courts this is the second point of the rule of law the third point of the rule of law is that it says that that constitution will not be the source of individual rights however the individual rights will define the constitution of the land this third point of the rule of law is of british origin i am going to repeat it once again kindly listen it carefully it says that that constitutional constitution of the land will not be the source of individual rights however the primacy of the rights of the individual that is the constitution will be the result of the rights of the individual as defined and enforced by the courts of law and constitution itself will not be the source of the rights this third point is not applicable in the rule of law in the context of indian governance in indian governance the supreme authority is the constitution uh, to be precise supreme authority is not the constitution in the constitution it is being stated in the very first line of the preamble that we the people of india so basically the constitution derives its powers from the people of india but all the rules all the rights are being written in the constitution of india and the whole governance is being carried out in accordance with the rules that are written in the constitution of india so this third point of the british origin of rule of law is not applicable in the context of the rule of law of indian constitution so only first two points the first point was that no arbitrary power that is a person can be punished only punished only if he has committed a breach of law and the second one was that that every citizen will be subjected to the same ordinary law of the land administered by the law courts of the land now in india the supreme court has said that that the rule of the law which is being embo embodied in article 14 is a part of the basic feature of the constitution and hence it cannot be removed abrogated or destroyed by any amendment to the constitution so this was rule of law as mentioned in article 14 of the indian constitution now if we talk about the equality aspect so the equality aspect of article 14 is not absolute it has some exceptions these exceptions are that the president of india and the governor of india they enjoy immunity also from the civil cases and also from criminal cases 
those immunities i will tell you in detail when i will reach the chapter of president the power the president and the governor of the states this is covered under article 361 of the indian constitution this i will tell you when i will reach there also other some exceptions of equality are that uh, the foreign sovereigns ambassadors and uh, uh, diplomats they will enjoy immunity in civil and criminal proceedings in the country all the agencies of the united nations organization have the diplomatic status and thus they have diplomatic immunity so they are also not covered under the ambit of article 14 and any person who publishes the proceedings in any court shall not uh, shall not be liable to any civil or criminal proceedings this is covered under article 361 a so there are many more exceptions and uh, they are covered under many different articles i will tell you those articles when i will reach uh, to those respective articles as far as article 14 is concerned i have told you everything about article 14 now i am moving to article 15 first of all i i first of all as usual i will read what article 15 says in the legal language and after that i will ex explain it to you article 15 says prohibition of discrimination on grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth first point the first point says that the state shall not discriminate against any citizen on grounds only of religion race caste sex place of birth or any of them the second point says that no citizen shall on grounds only of religion race caste sex place of birth or any of them be subject to any disability liability restriction or condition with regard to sub point 1 access to shops public restaurants hotels and places of public entertainment sub point 2 use of wells tanks bathing ghats roads and places of public resort maintained wholly or partly out of state funds or dedicated to the use of the general public third point nothing is in this article shall prevent the state from making any special provision for women and children fourth point nothing in this article or in clause 2 of article 29 shall prevent the state from making any special provision for the advancement of any socially and educationally backward class of citizens or for the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes point 5 nothing in this article or in sub clause g of clause 1 of article 10 shall prevent the state from making any special provision by law for the advancement of any socially and educationally backward classes of citizens or for the scheduled caste or the scheduled tribes in in so far as such provision relate to their admission to educational institutions including private educational institutions whether aided or unaided by the state other than the minority educational institutions referred to in clause 1 of article 30 so this was the legal language of article 15 what it means in detail i will explain you point by point point wise the very first point said that the state shall not discriminate against any citizen on ground grounds only of religion race caste sex place of birth or any of them the point is that it is not difficult to understand the only important thing is the word only it said that the state shall not discriminate against any citizen on grounds only of religion race caste sex place of birth or any of them that means this only words means that leaving these points on other points discrimination can be made by the state now the second point said that no citizen shall on grounds of any religion race caste sex place of birth or any of them be subject to any disability liability restriction or condition with regard to the first sub point was access to shops public restaurants 
hotels and places of public entertainment the second point was the use of wells tanks bathing ghats roads and places of public resort maintained wholly or partly out of state funds or dedicated to the use of the general public this second point says that the main difference the point is that the second point also stops discrimination the first point also stops discrimination but the point is that the second provision and the first provision the main difference between these two provisions is that the first provision is present to protect the fundamental rights of people from the action of the state whereas the second provision protects the fundamental rights of the citizens from the action of the state and also from the action of the private individual that is the uh, area of operation of the second point is higher that is it is against it is available also against the usage of power of the state and also against the usage of power of the any private, private individual now these are two main provisions of not discrimination of not discriminating among citizens in article 15 however now there are some very important exceptions to these provisions these exceptions were covered by me in article in the third point in the fourth point and in the fifth point it is no uh, it is of no importance reading those points uh, in the legal language but i will explain it to them here the main three exceptions to these rule of non discrimination are the first exception the state is permitted to make any special provision for women and children the second exception the state is permitted to make any special provision for the advancement of any socially and educationally backward classes of citizens or for the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes such as reservation of seats or fee concessions in public educational institutions this is the second exception the third exception is that the state is empowered to make any provision for the advancement of any socially and educationally backward classes of citizens or for the scheduled caste or the scheduled tribes regarding their admission to educational institutions including private educational institutions whether aided or unaided by the state except the minority educational institutions this third exception has been in use in the last 3 or 4 years mainly so basically these are the three main exceptions there are many more things in this thing but uh, i am covering the static part of indian polity so i am not going to tell them here i will write those exceptions those important amendments the rulings of the supreme court in the civil services article section of my blog gs-india.blogspot.in you can see it there for this audio tutorial i am finishing article 15 here now i am coming to article 16 of the indian constitution article 16 of the indian constitution again i am going to read the legal language after that i will explain it to you and now in this legal language i will not read it fully i will explain it to you because it is a bit wide and long and there is no point reading it totally article 16 says equality of opportunity in matters of public employment first point there shall be equality of opportunity for all citizens in matters relating to employment or appointment to any office under the state the second point says that no citizen shall on grounds only of religion race caste sex descent place of birth residence or any of them be ineligible for or discriminated against in respect of any employment or office under the state the third says nothing in this article shall prevent parliament from making any law prescribing in regard to a class or classes of employment or appointment to an office under the government of or any local or other authority within a state or union territory any requirement as to residence within that state or union territory prior to such employment or appointment fourth point says nothing in this article shall prevent the state from making any provision for the reservation of appointments 
or posts in favor of any backward class of citizens which in the opinion of the state is not adequately represented in the services under the state Four A, sub point. Nothing in this article shall prevent the state from making any provision for reservation in matters of promotion with consequential seniority to any class or classes of post in the services under the state in favor of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, which in the opinion of the state are not adequately represented in the services under the state. Sub point four B. Nothing in this article shall prevent the state from considering any unfilled unfilled vacancies in a year which are reserved for being filled up in that year in accordance with any provision for reservation made under artic made under clause four or clause four a as a separate class of vacancies to be filled up in any succeeding year or years and such class of vacancies shall not be considered together with the vacancies of the year in which they are being filled filled up. For determining the ceiling of fifty percent reservation on total number of vacancies of that year, this point was added by eighty fifth amendment act two thousand one. And the fifth point, nothing in this article shall affect the operation of any law which provides that the incumbent of an office in connection with the affairs of any religious or denominational institution or any member of the governing body thereof. Shall be a person professing a particular religion or belonging to a particular denomination. So, after reading the legal language, here I will tell you that uh, to understand the legal language of our Indian Constitution is not at not at all easy. it is it has been a point of criticism for our indian constitution that the language of our indian constitution is legal in nature it is not simple in nature so going by the legal language of our indian constitution it is will be a very difficult for an ordinary citizen to understand it so here i am going to explain it in detail to you it is very much clear that article 16 promotes equality of opportunity in public employment and it says that that any citizen cannot be discriminated against or cannot be declared ineligible for any employment or office under the state on grounds only of religion race caste sex descent place of birth or residence now there are some exceptions to this thing these exceptions are important and uh, uh, sh- can be asked in prelims examination and they are also very important points to write in the mains examination of civil services the first exception is that the state can provide for reservation of appointments or posts in favor of any backward class that is not adequately represented in the state services the second exception a law can provide that the incumbent of an office related to religious or denominational institution or a member of its governing body should belong to the particular religion or denomination the third exception is parliament can prescribe residence as a condition for certain employment or appointment in a state or union territory or local authority or other authority this is covered in the public employment act of 1957 which expired in 1974 right now it is applicable in only one state that is andhra pradesh so i am going to tell you in brief again these three exceptions the f- we have uh, read i have already told you that in this article 16 that state will not discriminate in terms of opportunity on the grounds of religion race caste sex descent place of birth or residence now this place of birth clause makes the third exception i told you the third exception that parliament can prescribe residence as a condition for certain employment or appointments in a state or union territory or local authority or other authority that is if the parliament says that if a person has to do this job he should belong 
or he should be living at a particular place. So this thing parliament can enable. So that place of birth clause exception is present in this third exception. The second exception was that a law can provide that an incumbent of an office related to religious or denominational institution or a member of its governing body should belong to a particular religion or denomination. Now in article 16 it also says that that the state cannot discriminate on grounds only of religion, race, caste, sex, the religion point. Now the religion point has one exception that if any religious institution is there or any denominational institution is there, denominational institution is there, then in those institutions the state can appoint a person who belongs to that religion. So this thing will not violate article 14. This is one more exception of article 14, the second exception. The first exception is that the state can provide for reservation of appointments or post in favor of any backward class that is not adequately represented in the state services. This is very simple. If the government thinks that this class has not adequate representation and it is very much backward, then it can provide reservation in opportunities in public services. So these are three, three exceptions. You have to remember them. There are many more things. There was a Mandal Commission formed. Uh, in 1979, its reports are very much important. Its reports, I am not telling here in this audio tutorial. I will upload it in the Civil Services Article section, the Mandal Commission report and all those amendments that were happening at that time. So right now I am finishing Article 16. Coming to Article 17 of the Indian Constitution. Article 17 of the Indian Constitution. Article 17 of the Indian Constitution tells us about abolition of untouchability. It reads, legal language reads, untouchability is abolished and its practice in any form is forbidden. The enforcement of any disability arising out of untouchability shall be an offense punishable in accordance with law. Now Article 17 There is one important act that I would like to say here that is the Protection of Civil Rights Act which was enabled in 1955. It said that that offenses that, that would be committed on the ground of untouchability, the people will be punished by impris imprisonment up to 6 months or they will be fined Rs 500 or both can be done. Also, a person that will be convicted of untouchability will be disqualified for being elected to state legislature or parliament. This Protection of Civil Rights Act 1955 declares these acts as offenses. I am going to tell you what those acts are. The first one is that preventing any person from entering any place of public worship or from worshipping therein. The second point. Justifying untouchability on traditional, religious, philosophical or other grounds. Third point. Denying access to any shop, hotel or places of public entertainment. Fourth point. Insulting a person belonging to scheduled caste on the ground of untouchability. Fifth point. Refusing to admit persons in hospitals, educational institutions or hostels established for public benefit. Sixth point. Preaching untouchability directly or indirectly. Sixth, seventh point, refusing to sell goods or render services to any person. One more important point to note in this untouchability aspect of Article 17 is that the Supreme Court in its judgment has said that the power of Article 17, constitutional power of Article 17 is also available to citizen against private individuals and it is the constitutional responsibility and obligation of the state to take appropriate and necessary action and steps so as to ensure that this right is not violated. That is the right against untouchability is not violated. So this was the untouchability article 17 coming to article 18 of the Indian constitution. Article 18 of the Indian constitution tells us about abolition of titles. 
the legal language reads something like this first point no title not being a military or academic distinction shall be conferred by the state second point no citizen of india shall accept any title from any foreign state third point no person who is a, who is not a citizen of india shall while he holds any office of profit or trust under the state accept without the consent of the president any title from any foreign state and fourth point no person holding any office of profit or trust under the state shall without the consent of the president accept any present emolument or office of any kind from any of any kind from or under any foreign state so in this article 18 these points are very much easy and not very much difficult to understand that uh, in the first point it was being told that uh, any st the state cannot confer any title on any body whether a citizen or a foreigner except the military or academic distinctions yani that means that it can confer military or academic distinctions but it cannot confer any other except military or academic distinctions the second said that that any citizen of india shall not accept any title from any foreign state the third point said that a foreigner holding any office of profit or trust under the state cannot accept any title from any foreign state without the consent of the president and the fourth point said that that no foreigner or citizen holding any office of profit or trust under the state is to accept any present emolument or office from or under any foreign state without the consent of the president the most important point in which these abolition of titles come into play is the point regarding the awards like padma vibhushan bharat ratna padma bhushan and padma shri now the constitutional validity of these awards was upheld by the supreme court in 1996 the supreme court ruled that these titles padma bhushan padma vibhushan pad, uh, bharat ratna padma shri they are not hered hereditary titles of nobility and it also said that they should not be used as suffixes or prefixes to the names of the awardees so they are not violative of article 18 of the indian constitution the supreme court gave this decision on the premise that merit should be recognized these awards were discontinued by the government that was headed by morarji desai in 1977 but again when the indira gandhi government the congress government returned in 1980 these awards were again revived so this is a very important question of prelims if someone ask you that when were these awards were discontinued they were discontinued in 1977 by morarji desai led government and they were again revived in 1980 by indira gandhi led government and their constitutional validity has been upheld by the supreme court in its verdict of 1996 so with this i finish article 18 and i also finish my this audio tutorial In the next audio tutorial I will tell you from article 19 of the Indian Constitution a very small thing I will like to tell you about article 19 of the Indian Constitution article 19 guarantees to all its citizens six basic rights these rights are right to freedom of speech and expression second right to assemble peacefully and without arms third right to form associations or unions or cooperative societies fourth right to move freely throughout the territory of India fifth right to reside and settle in any part of the territory of india sixth right to practice any profession or to carry on any occupation trade or business these are the six important rights which are covered under article 19 of the indian constitution from article 19 i will in detail i will start from my next audio tutorial in this in today's audio tutorial i have covered from article 14 to article 18 of the indian constitution i hope you like this audio tutorial and uh, have a good day see you next time